raged through all Aventasia. The alliance of humans, elves, and dwarves fought against the evil army of the shadows. The war had devastated the country for years upon years, and yet, no one gained the advantage. And so it was that in that time of deepest despair, that an old archaeologist uncovered the location of the artifact of divine fate. The artifact could fulfill every wish and thus decide the war, for one side or the other. Led by warlock Munkus, son of Archwitch Mortroga, the shadows hunted for the artifact. And they would have reached it first, were it not for a group of heroes who stood against them. Wilbur, the young gnome who was the first of his clan to become a mage. Ivo, the courageous elven princess from the Woodland Realm. And the Critter, a hairy creature from the Northlands, companion of the most brilliant of the heroes. Nate Bonnet, who was supposed to spend the rest of his life at the side of an elven princess, who deserved a kingdom and all the riches in the world, who should stop wasting time talking about himself in the third person. Good, good, this is good. Although the ground is still getting closer. Part of the jetty. At least some of it survived the explosion. If I'm lucky, this will go all the way up to the island. <laughs> but somehow I really doubt it will. Nate, how's it going? Good, for now. Could it be that your spell didn't quite work out the way you planned? I did tell you there were certain risks involved. No big thing. So, now that we have a little time to kill, why don't you tell me a little something about yourself? Oh, right. Well, um, yes, I came into this world in an oasis in the Umzu Desert, and at that time, I was... Are you out of your ever-loving mind? Definitely not the time to reminisce. Then why did you ask? I could use some help here, Benny. Well, you did see what happened last time I cast a spell. Time to make up for it, then. Now shake a leg. Oh, I don't know. I might just end up making everything worse. Can't you just stop time? Or wings! Give me wings! How about that? Oh, this is all terribly complicated. I really don't feel up to it today, Nate. Benny! Perhaps tomorrow? I really do need to think through what's happened today properly. You get me out of the mess you got us into right now! Please don't yell at me! I just can't take it anymore! Benny! state he's in, we can forget about miracles. I gotta find something easy, something even he thinks he can do. A flying carpet! Is that too much to ask? I'm not talking to you. Why, you... Uh, I'm sorry I criticized your work, Benny. And? And? And that I shook your lamp. And everything else. You meant well. 
Well, all right then. I forgive you. What can I do for you? Carpet! Mmm! A flying carpet. Shouldn't be too hard. Should I really dare? Am I really up to it? Yes! What the heck? What happened here? Welcome, adventurer. I am the tutorial, guardian of gameplay, explainer of controls. Use the left stick to move the character. Well done. If you walk up to an object, context-sensitive actions will be displayed. Walk up to that big lever and press A. The robot has used the lever, as this seemed logical to him. Now press B so that the robot looks at the lever rather than uses it. Excellent. The robot thinks the lever is working. But if that's so, then where is the problem? That hatch over there, walk up to it and press A. The little chap seems to think there are advanced engine mechanics hidden behind there. Perhaps that's where the problem is. Press A again, next to the hatch. First time you press A will allow you to look, the second to use. Why? Because after a player character has looked at something, the most logical thing to do next is use it. It's quite simple. Press B when you want to look at something. Press A in order to do whatever that character thinks is the next most sensible move. Is the machine working again? Walk up to the lever and press A. Appears to be a new problem. Better take a closer look at the engine. Oops, that wasn't very helpful. Please pick up both gears by pressing A. If you can reach several objects from one position, you can use the right stick to select the one you want to interact with. Great work! Items you pick up will go into your inventory. You open and close your inventory by pressing Y. To use an inventory item, select it with A, and then select the object that you want it to be used with. 
Use one of the gears in your inventory with the engine of the town model. Excellent. Now the second gear. Perfect. You better oil the engine before you switch the machine back on again. That should do it. Time to crank it up. Examine objects in the inventory in more detail. Pick up the damaged figure and the toolbox. Then open the inventory with Y and press B in order to examine the toolbox. Great! You found a few items in the toolbox. You can use these items on each other by initially selecting the first object with A and then using it on the second object again with A. Try to repair the figure in the inventory. Well done. Now place the figure back in its rightful place on the balcony of the castle and start the machine. Adventures in a book of unwritten tales. I'm worried about you. Oh, Mother. What's wrong with you? Everything's fine. No, you don't look well at all. Positively rotund. It is unseemly for an elf princess to cope with her frustrations by comfort eating. If you carry on like this, you won't fit into your wedding dress. I don't have any intentions of marrying any time soon. Oh, darling, we've been through that already. Prince Lalilos is going to be arriving next week. You will like him. He's charming and... Look, he sent us a picture of himself and his sister. Um, which of the two is the sister? The elf nobility, unfortunately, has not got any unshaven Neanderthals to offer. You'll just have to get used to that. I don't have the slightest interest in that person. Not anymore. You are at the heart of the elf kingdom, in the castle of your family where you belong. No one here should be sad, tired, or fat. I only want what's best for you, Ivo.
Have you seen this prince? A vain river elf who's only interested in topping up his tan. I'm to spend hundreds of years in the company of someone I don't love. Huh, not me. And how? She will try anything and everything. Nothing's more important to her than getting me married off. Ugh. When I was out there with the humans, it was the first time that I had the feeling I could determine my own destiny. Yes, it was dangerous. Doesn't that go with the territory? A life without risk, that is so... so... Oh, you don't understand. If I could, I would go right now. You want to stop me? <laughs> Just like last time. I didn't want to tell Mother, but I've not been feeling too well lately, Cheap. I'd say the same thing, but we elves hardly ever get ill. Yeah, you've got a point there. I spent almost a year in the human world and they have some very strange ideas about personal hygiene. Well, I thought... perhaps it's a curse. Oh, no, you won't. I'll take care of it myself. Mother would make a state occasion out of it. I don't know either, but I'm sure there's a medical book down in the library. No, rest is not what I need just now. I'll go down to the library and look up what's wrong with me, completely alone, just like a grown-up elf. I'm not going to be stopped, neither by locked doors nor by you. Cheep Cheep survived our past adventure, even if he'll insist on exactly the opposite. He told everyone for months how he defended me from all the evils of the world and then only just escaped with his tail feathers intact. I had my birthday during the few weeks that we spent living together here in the elf burrow. That was a big deal for Wilbur. He couldn't understand that the significance of birthdays tends to fade after a few hundred years. He insisted on making me a present. He sat in the corner for days knitting me this hat with his little gnarled fingers. Wilbur didn't know that autumn would last for years to come and that elves don't feel the cold, but it was still the best birthday present I've ever had. Mother looked at the hat with so much revulsion that I didn't take it off for days. Wilbur just beamed with pride. My jewellery box serves as a podium for the vertically challenged narcissist. I've been sleeping badly of late, and sometimes I feel tired all day long. I've never been ill, but something isn't right. I hope I'll find the answer in the library. Normally this bowl is full of fruit and nuts. Presumably, Mother has decided I should be without such things whilst I am, as she says, positively rotund. An envoy from the Far East gave me this musical box years ago. Wherever I go, I always have its tune in my head. A guard with a spear and shield, and like all elven figures, immaculate. Fresh water from the spring brook, the little stream that rises here in the castle and provides for the whole valley. People come from far and wide to drink it. A beautiful red flower. It was only put here a few days ago. Sometimes Mother orders a new plant that looks nice in my room. 
and then it's replaced and planted in the garden. Could you please move aside? I want to get into my jewellery box. Hmm, he doesn't listen to me anymore since I almost caused him to be roasted by fireballs, decapitated by swords and eaten by monsters. Mother has permitted him to disregard any of my orders that go against her wishes. His interpretation of this can be liberal. The times when the others were here in the elf burrow, those were the best that I've ever had. The critter could never keep still when I was drawing him. He was always pulling faces and trying to make me laugh. Wilbur was so excited. He loves elves and our stories. He spent hours sitting with my father and listening to him talk about bygone ages. <laughs> Complete idiot. It may not be befitting of a princess, but this isn't the first time that I've climbed into the garden via the balcony, and it won't be the last. We have many exotic plants here in the palace, but some flowers are my favourite. Apologies, I need a few of your seeds. I used to look into the woods for days on end, imagining what the world beyond would be like. Now I know, and I think I miss it. It may not be befitting of a princess, but this is... I, um, I'm just doing my morning exercises. I wasn't going to. I could just ignore him and climb down into the garden anyway. He would, however, make a beeline to Mother and tell on me, and who knows what the two of them would cook up for me next. Hey, Cheap, you hungry? Fancy some delicious sunflower seeds? You want the seeds? I want to get out of this room. Could we not come to some arrangement? I know that royal servants are unbribable, but sunflower seeds? Huh, then perhaps not. Since Nate left without saying so much as a word, Mother seized the opportunity to marry me off to a proper elf prince. So far, I've managed to frighten off every candidate successfully, but she's starting to lose her patience. A friendly gift from nature, taken without permission. A friendly gift from nature, taken without permission. Cheep, cheep, would it be possible for you to stop admiring yourself for two seconds and move over to stuffing your beak instead? Don't say I never look after you. Pearls, precious stones, sparkling earrings and necklaces. 
all the stuff I have to wear at official functions. If it were up to Mother, I would have trunkfuls of this stuff, and a wing of the castle would be my wardrobe. She just can't understand why Pa and I aren't into this sort of thing. Pearls, precious stuff. Goodness knows. It's an age-old game. I hide his mirror and he pretends that he doesn't care. But sooner or later he'll get grumpy and I relent. Hey, cheap. Oh, missing your mirror? Well, sooner or later you won't be able to stand it anymore. Not horrible. I just don't want to be locked in my room like a child. And you really think it's appropriate for me to be locked in here too, eh? Yes, only what's best for me. She always says that. See you later. Yes, of course I'll be a good girl and stay in my room. Okay, he's not looking this way. Oh, there is more than one kind of stretch exercise, you know. Perhaps you'd like to train with me. No chance. I can't sneak down as long as Cheap Cheap's on guard. Mother's locked me in, as if I was 200 again. Since I secretly escaped from the elf burrow last year, she's taken to guarding me closer than ever before. The plant would survive, I'm sure, but at the moment I don't need any more. Precious stones, sparkling earrings and necklaces. Goodness knows what I could use this tap for right now.
I don't know how, but he always seems to know when I'm going against Mother's will. Perhaps it's a sixth sense, or magic. Or he just knows me too well. It's an age-old game. The box, as well as its hinges and lock, has been fashioned from one piece of tree root. A masterful piece of workmanship, just like everything else here in the Elf Burrow. When Nate and the others lived here, Nate often made intimations that were to do with the bed. I don't know why, but I know Mother wasn't happy about it. She moved him to a guarded guest room at the other end of the castle. And Cheap Cheap was ordered never to leave my side. Hmm, a delicate, sweet scent. It reminds me of a wood over in the west where I learnt to use a bow and arrow. Cheap Cheap has eaten every last seed from the bowl. No, I'm not thirsty. Elven craftsmen have centuries to perfect their artistic skills. Only when everything is always perfect, then isn't everything always the same and somehow unimportant? The music box closes automatically as soon as the melody finishes. It may not be befitting of a princess. I've seen much suffering, much evil and unkindness in the world out there. But it was exciting. It was alive. Here in the Elf Burrow, everything is so ordered, so perfect, so dull. One day's just like the next, and they just pass by endlessly. It's my mirror, really, but Cheap Cheap would probably miss it much more than me. Since Nate left without saying so much as a word, so far I've... The box, as well as its hinges and lock, has pearls, precious stone, goodness. No
It's an age-old game. would survive, I'm sure, but at the moment... Fresh water from the spring, but people come from far away. put any number of things into the bowl. Want to choose? Hey, withdrawal symptoms. I just need the music box a minute. You don't need to turn your head away from your beautiful reflection for one second. Come on. Let's go. As expected, no one here. My parents are in the throne room ruling the lands. Or rather, mother is. There's only a little water left in the bird bath. Cheap Cheap always says that it evaporates quickly. I, however, think that the constant need to replenish the water is more down to his unbridled, joyous splashing and not insignificant body mass. A fairly small, unattractive tree. Huh. I'd like to see how attractive you'd look if someone disturbed you on the pot in the morning. You mean... Anyway, what could I do for you, my little beauty? Mother put me on a diet this morning, so that I'll look perfect for my wedding. Oh, everything has to be perfect for her. No such thing in nature, of course. Or rather, everything is perfect if you just let nature run its course. You tell that to Mother. I have, many times. She'd be very clever in some things, but very daft concerning that. Now then, she is the Queen. I'm old enough to be able to call a spade a spade. <laughs> spade. Gardener, get it? You and Father, you get along well, don't you? Ah, no one understands more about nature than him, that's for sure. But I don't often ask him for help. Thinking has never got a field dug if you get my drift. He's just more of a theorist. Ah, the mud on your feet, the smell of fresh earth, all that joy and life. And he's missing out on the lot by just sitting around up there and doing nubbit. The garden always looks fantastic, Arbor. Thank you. It's a girt load of work. People always think elf gardens are fabulous by their very nature. But you need a mighty good gardener. You have got green fingers. Ah, that's just moss, me dear. Happens if you spend all day grubbing around in the earth and don't wash your hands properly in the evenings. 
What are you up to today, then? Got much on? Oh, the usual. You know, it never rains in the old burrow, but the flowers need their water, so I water them every day. Ah, the curse of good weather. <laughs> the weather isn't the only thing which isn't right. I've been here 30 years, and for 30 years we've had autumn. Time passes differently in the elf burrow. Slower. Well, that's why everyone grows to be ancient here, obviously. But if we had a bit of normal weather in the usual seasons, oh, there'd be a lot more variety here. Nowhere are the trees so green and healthy as here in the elf world. You tree shepherds do a great job. <laughs> tree shepherds? The trees just stand there. Why do they need a shepherd? However, I quite fancy one of those shepherd dogs. Hey, Rex, do you want to be my shepherd dog? <laughs> nah, my darling. I'm a gardener. Nothing more, nothing less. I have to get on. Yep, got a bit to do myself. I just don't know what's wrong with that plant over there. Your mother got a whole heap of flowers given to her the other day from a fairy delegation. All of them took good and strong, just not that one. Perhaps it needs a special type of soil or something. Well, anything's possible. If I don't think of something soon, I'll have to ask your father. He can have a little chat with her and she might tell him what's up. Um, if you're going in, it'd be nice if you didn't tell my mother that you saw me out here. Oh, you playing hooky again? My lips are sealed. Arba's obviously concerned about his flower. Mother thought it was unseemly of the bees to build their hive in our garden. I don't think she could get used to the thought that she would no longer be the only queen here. It doesn't look very well at all. It's unusual for flowers to hang their heads in this garden. Normally they blossom in our good earth, not to mention the power of Arba's green fingers. I don't know the names of all the plants in the garden. Grandmother knows them all, which is probably down to the fact that it was her that gave many of the plants their names a few thousand years ago. Shite beerwood, sweat tea, dodder flower, fat hen, bistort, stink root. Mm. We no longer invite her to family gatherings. This is Mother's Mirror. It's said that you can see into the furthest corners of the land and know what's happening in every part of the world. At the moment, it's no more than a shallow bowl. The water's missing. A handy smooth stone, Arba's sheep dog. Arba's pot, literally. That's a weeping willow. It appears to be so content it looks anything but sad. The spring brook emerges up there. It's still small here, but it becomes one of the largest and most important rivers in the woodland realm. There are elf-made ponds and streams all over the palace ground. Their water's said to have healing powers. No wonder considering where it comes from. That leads up to the throne room. Mother will be conducting the affairs of state with an iron will, whilst Pa leans against the tree of life, probably sleeping. The waterfall and I have been neighbours for so long that I don't really hear it anymore. A handy smooth stone, Arba's sheep dog.
lovely spot, so long as the bees who have built their hive directly above the bench don't disturb you. I don't have any time to rest, and that's good. At last, I've got something to do again. Hi, Arba. Oh, Ivo! Have you found out what's wrong with the plant yet? Nope, I haven't. Everything looks proper. Earth is moist and nutrient rich. The sun is shining. Ah, difficult case. I'd quite like to smoke my morning pipe now, but uh, first work, then play. See you later, Arba. See ya. Several books about animals, an atlas, a book about humans, actually, more of a brochure. And what's this? Fishing for the moderately talented. Hmm. I haven't really got the time to sit and read a book, and if I had, it would definitely not be one about fishing. There must be a medical book for elves here somewhere. Goldsmithing, masonry, and a book about carpentry. Like all books in this library, it's a guest present. The logic behind this must be, those elves, they have so many beautiful statues and items of wood, they'll be really interested in this, why don't we present them with a book about it? What they don't realise though, is that if we're interested in a subject, then we'll already know pretty much all there is to know about the matter, and the books of no use to us whatsoever. Working with wood. There's a master whittler down in the valley. I've enjoyed watching him in the past. He carves animal figures so real that humans and dwarfs believe that they are actually animals turned into wood. This one's more about interiors, making furniture and the like. Plane the wood down by a pixie's thumb and saw the board into two equal length pieces. Hmm, who knows what that might be good for. A great example of the variety of our world's fauna. Some of the ideas Mother Nature has can be quite off the wall. A few years ago, this dragon was causing a whole lot of grief. A bounty was put on its head and all heroes of the land were encouraged to hunt it down. Forty brave warriors penetrated its lair and slew it. They brought the head to the palace where it was displayed in triumph. The strange thing was that a bit later more adventurers came carrying an identical head, then more and more heroes arrived. Swords of all the idiots who have tried to conquer the elf burrow. It's become less frequent over the last few centuries. Humans and dwarves appear to have learnt their lesson. A present from one of the Northern Kingdoms. Strange folk up there. The men climb mountains and shout foul-mouthed things in dragon's language at the dragons. I think it's some kind of test of courage. The Biggest Plant Book of Aventasia by Charles Mendel with illustrations by Alexander Bonpland. A standard reference book that Arbor always used to consult every now and then. However, he insists that he now knows it off by heart. There's a selection of cubes here. For a while, it was all the rage at official state visits to give geometric presents.
This flower clearly is one of the more exotic of the palace's flowers. It comes from a country in the deep south beyond the deserts. It's said that the flower of this plant used to be sent as a declaration of war, or if one wanted to deprive someone of all sense. What have we got here then? Aha! Ah, Almanac of Elf Medicine. That's what I've been looking for. Ow! Be careful, if you please. A speaking book? An ill elf? Ill elf? So I look ill? What's wrong with me? Take it easy, young one, one thing at a time. Young one, I'm older than you. And you look it, too. I do? No, of course not, and I can also see no illness. But the mere fact that I've been fished out from the back of the shelf for the first time in centuries tells me that something is wrong. I haven't been feeling too well recently. I'm sleeping badly and have no appetite. I know that elves are very seldom ill, but if it's not that, then it must be some kind of magic or curse. Hmm. Seldom ill does not actually mean never ill. Elves can, for instance, suffer from a broken heart. Oh, please. It is one of the most common causes of death amongst beautiful princesses. Oh, it must be something else. Sensitive elves can sometimes suffer from the pains of the world. There are a variety of ear infections, and of course it could also be lupus. Hmm. But I think it is something else. Like what? To be completely certain, you must mix a potion and drink it. Are you serious? Very. Are you actually qualified to make a diagnosis? And why can you talk? I am a magical medicine book. That actually serves as an answer to both of your questions. I've never encountered a talking book before. Of course not. I am the only talking book here. That's the problem. In the magical library in Seastone, all books can talk. Things really get cooking there, believe me. You were probably given to us by someone from Seastone, right? Right. I was a complete idiot and actually volunteered. As I am a book about elf medicine, I didn't get much to do in Seastone. I thought to myself, hey, this is your chance to get some practical experience. Wrong. Yeah, we elves don't get ill much. And more than that, you don't actually have much time for books. This is the center of the elven kingdom. And just look at how paltry this library is. We don't have much use for books. We sing songs about times past and many of us were there at the time. Then that's probably also the reason why so many elves stand around in white. What do you mean? Allow me to elucidate. Over the years, the songs you elves sing will be changed and adapted. A little here, a little there. This editorial process is nothing more than refined elvish propaganda, presenting them as intelligent and morally impeccable. And who can prove otherwise? There are no other witnesses and there are no books. All right, this potion, what goes in it? It is very easy to make. You need to pound together the green fruit of a metis bush, a spoonful of honey and a red herring, and then mix with water into a viscous potion. Oh, that sounds revolting. It's medicine, it isn't supposed to taste nice. And if I drink it, I'll be well again? We will then at least know what is wrong with you. This metis bush, where can I find one? Haven't a clue. I'm just a book and have spent years sandwiched between dusty hymnals and a tome of revolting recipes. A red herring? Are you serious? Of course, why not? Red herrings are known all over the land as particularly useful fish. Their uses in the areas of medicine, cuisine and literature are too numerous to mention. All right, so I've got a red herring. 
Thank you. I think that's all for now. Normally, it's me that ends patient consultations. You are only a princess, but I, I am a doctor. The door can be opened easily from the outside. If it was up to me, it would stay open. Water's the easiest ingredient to find. We have copious amounts of it here. That should do it. The medicine book reckoned that it should be a viscous potion. I'm going to have to take a few more of your seeds, but I promise this is the last time. There are reeds and water lilies growing in the pond. Naturally, they were planted there. They don't grow in the wild so high up the mountains. I can't think of any use for a water lily, but a reed could come in handy. As suspected, there are red herrings swimming in the pond. They are really saltwater fish that live in the sea, but they always come back to their homeland to breed. They're the only known fish variety that can scale nearly vertical cliffs. I really shouldn't... It's only Earth. I should tell Mother how her daughter... Well, she'd be delighted. No idea what kind of bush this is, but its red fruit looks very yummy. If I learnt one thing in the woods, it's that you shouldn't eat anything you don't know, regardless of how yummy it looks. I convinced Mother not to have the hive removed, and she reluctantly agreed. However, should she be stung, then the hive's days are numbered. I don't really know much about reeds or pipes, but if I'm not mistaken, then those things are called pipe cleaners. The reed from the garden pond, it's like a hollow pipe. Well, pipes are normally hollow. Isn't there a turn of phrase like stirring up a bee's nest? I think the saying's trying to give us a warning. As long as the bees are wide awake and buzzing, I don't dare. Oh, Ivo! 
Look, I found the Woodcrafts? Why are you showing me that? I thought it might interest you. I don't like horror stories. Horror stories? Wood that has been clamped into a revolving monstrosity to be whittled down layer by layer to the core? What do you call that then? Sorry, never looked at it like that. Branches sawed off, boards nailed together, wood treated with chemicals. Oh, sick stuff. If I were ill and needed to make some medicine, then you'd help me with that, wouldn't you? Ill? You're an elf! Elves don't get ill. But if I were... <sighs> oh, come on. Now tell me. How can I help you? Do we have a metus bush in the garden here? Or oh, that bush over yonder. But that fruit's red. And what colour do you expect, then? Green. Are they only green when they're not ripe? Nah, they're blue, then. They're green when the bush senses danger. Pardon? The Metis bush has exceptionally delicious sweet fruit. But if it thinks it's in danger, then they go green and very sour. Call it a defense mechanism. Ah, and the bush only has red fruit because it has nothing to be afraid of here. Ah, that's right. I often see you fishing. Could you lend me your rod? Of course, if you bring it back in one piece. What's up? I was convinced that I would have to make my own fishing rod or that you'd ask me to collect a variety of mystical items in exchange for it. Why? It's only a rod. Thanks. Well, everything needs to be complicated, you know. Do you know how I could get my hands on some honey? Try the kitchens? I prefer not to wander through the castle. Ah, of course. Someone would tell your mother. Would that beehive in the tree over there be of any help? Oh, I'd be careful with that. The bees defend their honey and can give you a nasty sting. Couldn't they be distracted or tricked in some way? Beekeepers wear protective clothes and use smoke that calms the bees. But I don't have any beekeeper kit here. I just let the bees keep their honey and they pollinate my flowers. That's how we've always done it. There's something else. About the potion... Art. There's something else. See you later, Arba. See ya! This is a metis bush. Just what I need. Only its fruit is red, not green. I don't really know much about reeds or pipes, but if... The worms provide a great lure and should increase my fishing success rate, whatever that is. I always hang one onto the hook before I cast the line out. I don't have a clue about fishing, but I'll try my luck. Just as I expected, nothing. On the other hand, somehow I have the feeling that I now know what I'm doing. The worms provide a great look. I always hang one onto the hook, but I guess that I can just practice until I'm good enough. Or I could try to speed things up by learning.
perhaps there are a few practical hints and tips in the fishing book. A lucrative season with a successful technique doesn't just depend on the type and quality of your tackle, but also on a really good spot. It doesn't matter whether you jig, dip, toddle or feed. Wobblers, twisters, spinners, blinkers, poppers, jigs, jerks and live bait must be presented in the most enticing ways possible. I haven't the faintest idea what all that means. I presume my fishing talents are not quite advanced enough to enable me to use this book. <laughs>